We find ourselves today on the precipice of so many new beginnings. In some ways, I feel like a kid in early December who can see the presence under the tree and knows that so many exciting things are yet to come. But the big day still seems too far off. It's too early to be too excited, and so you have to temper your hope and your anticipation. You are eagerly awaiting good things to come, but you still must wait. I find it's hard to be patient when I am longing for and anticipating something new. We're just 10 days into the new year, still hoping and praying that this year may be better than the last. We're ready to leave 2020 in the past. We're also just 10 days from what we hope will be a peaceful transition of power and an inauguration, even though we still hear protests and challenges and see the Capitol being stormed. Every day we read about more people receiving the vaccine. And we hope for a time when we can once again gather in groups, large and small, to worship and to celebrate together. We long for the day when we can once again travel and be with friends and family we haven't seen since last March. We have much to be hopeful for and much to anticipate. Much of our hope, and if we're honest, much of the pressure that we're placing on this new year, though, also comes from the deep sense of grief, isolation, anxiety, and worry that comes from the pandemic, from the staggering loss of life due to COVID, and from the national distress, conflict, and chaos that all too frequently rules our newsfeed. The calendar has changed from 2020 to 21, but we are still living in a virtual and an isolated world. We are still waiting. We long for change, for a new beginning, for release from the wilderness. We know in our hearts that we are a people of peace and of love, and we long for a realization of that hope. Thankfully, this morning's lessons have much to offer us as we seek to find solace and hope for the coming year. First, the reading from Genesis reminds us that God enters into the chaos and the void to bring life and new creation. God seeks relationship and brought order to create a new world and new beings out of nothing. God's love and spirit flowed over the waters, giving birth to new life. Even when it seems like we're surrounded by darkness, and utter havoc, even when the news seems overwhelming and like all order has been lost, we are reminded that there is nowhere we can go, that God isn't already there, breathing life and beauty and love into existence and casting out the darkness. God breaks into the void, seeking relationship, bringing order and creating that which is good, life, Beauty and love can all be brought out of the chaos by God. There is nowhere that is too dark, too empty, or too damaged to be transformed. Jesus in the Gospel of Mark is also on the precipice of a new beginning. We hear this morning from the first chapter only four verses in, and Jesus is preparing to be baptized. Jesus' baptism inaugurates Jesus' earthly ministry, bestowing upon him his identity as God's beloved. And here again, God is breaking into the world. We are told that the heavens are torn apart and the Spirit descends upon Jesus like a dove, breaking in and filling Jesus with the Spirit. And then, immediately even, Jesus is driven out into the wilderness by the Spirit, where he is tempted by Satan. Jesus doesn't enter the wilderness alone. He is filled with and accompanied by the Spirit after receiving his identity as God's beloved. We are reminded that we are never alone, even when we find ourselves in the wilderness. And when temptation and risk seems overwhelming, we are accompanied by the same Spirit who ministered to and accompanied Jesus. We are a community of believers, surrounded by and supported by each other. 
but also carried along by the Spirit of God. We are reminded that the same God who loves us and accompanied us and accompanies us spent time in the wilderness being tempted and yet overcame all of the challenges. My prayer for all of us today, and especially for Penelope and Lachlan who are recently baptized, is that we might all receive this blessing, that we might all acknowledge that we are God's beloved. First, I ask that we all might recognize that everyone we encounter and see was created by God as God's beloved. God broke into the world and brought order out of the darkness and the chaos so that we all might have life and relationship with God and with each other. And we are called to treat each other with the love and respect that is due a beloved child of God. And it may be easy for us to see God when we gaze upon a young baby or a child being baptized. It may be easy for us to see God in the life of a saint or of a faithful believer. But can we see the beloved in someone who doesn't think or act or vote like us? Can we see the beloved in someone who challenges us and confronts us? Can we confront the systems and the people that seek to deny the belovedness of others? Can we help bring about a world where everyone can live fully as God's beloved? Now, I know for some of us, the hardest thing may be seeing God's beloved when we look in the mirror. Can we imagine ourselves as someone for whom God broke into the world, bringing life and order and proclaiming love and blessing upon us? Can we hear God's love and blessing proclaimed for us as we might hear it for others? Can we accept and receive the blessing of being God's beloved for each other and for ourselves? This is a year and a time that needs the inbreaking power and love of God. This is a time crying out for the cleansing waters of baptism. This is a time when too many of God's beloved are isolated, alone, sick, discriminated against, and living in fear. And yet all the same, we know that God is breaking in, even in these times, transforming the world and proclaiming love and blessing. I pray that we might leave this morning transformed, filled with hope, trusting in the inbreaking power of God, and prepared to accept and share the blessing when we hear the words of love. You are my child, my beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Amen.